as I was um, yesterday had uh, a fantastic phone call. I believe it was Friday. Uh, one of the brothers from uh, Milagro, um, Brother Dan Sanchez, who's um, around 76 or 77 now, he plays a trumpet. Um, my brother had talked to him and I had asked to, to see how he was doing. And um, the brother came down with cancer last year on um, his throat. Uh, cancer, um, and he, he was, thought it was tonsil. They thought it was tonsillitis and found out that it was cancerous. And he had a growth, he had a tumor that was growing. And uh, so he went through the surgery and uh, the radiation therapy and a little bit of chemo. And uh, last night I, I, I received a report that uh, he's cancer free. Praise the Lord, man. And no cancer at all. God. They went and checked, they did a probe, they did a biopsy, and they found that he has none whatsoever. Oh, yeah. And we've been praying for the brother, um, and uh, 77 years old, serving God since he was 58, came to the Lord at a late age. Wow. And so therefore, God does miracles. Amen. Amen. Every day. And so the brother, during this period of time, he, um, he had to, they had to, take all his teeth out of his mouth because of the surgeries and because of the fact that they thought maybe he was into his manual. And so he was praising God because he couldn't play the trumpet anymore. They told him, well, in 30 days you're going to receive a new set of teeth so you can play the trumpet once again for the Lord. <laughs> so he is so excited. Man, praise God. And he's going to be able to serve God. He's been serving God as it is with his testimony, but he's going to be serving God once again playing the trumpet as his the desire is the same desire as God's. And we continue to pray and we were reminded, and he reminded me of something so important in our family of God. And the title would be Toxic or Transformed. Do we know that we have toxic waste in the world today? Do we know it? I talked to the students at, at, um, in school and I'm always talking to them about toxic waste, and I ask them, do you think, do you know where our, our toxic waste goes, our, our blood and all that stuff? And they said, no, no, Mr. Mendes, we don't know. Said, well, it gets delivered to uh, San Luis Obispo, or it gets thrown out in the middle of the ocean in, in tubs, in 55-gallon drums that are sealed. And um, our, our society believes, our government believes that uh, that's going to be okay to, to dump this stuff out there. But you know that uh, there's a different type of toxic amongst us. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and we, we, we've heard this parable before. And it's found in Matthew 13. There's two parables that are similar to each other. Chapter 13 of Matthew. And we're going to talk about the second one, which is verse 24 through 26. It is very interesting if you, if you compare the two and you put them parallel with one another. And the first one, the second one here, the, the Word of God tells us in, in chapter 13, verse 24 to 26, Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. That while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. That when the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the tares became evident also. Now I was reminded of this incident when I read Matthew 24 and 30, in this chapter, that Jesus tells another simple parable about a farmer. I was reminded about the first one, which is in verses 3 to 9. He has already shared a story about sowing good seed on different types of soil in that, in that in those verses between verses 3 and 9. And the farmer in this parable is also sowing seed, but this time the seed doesn't represent the message of Christ. But it's presenting the message of the servants of Christ in the second parable. Jesus, the farmer, is sowing followers of Christ into his field, which is the world. And it's so important for us to understand this, for us to get a grasp of this. Did you know that there's toxic out there? Toxicities, the tares, the weeds. 
And not only is it out there, but it's within our church, our churches of today. In Matthew chapter 28, we all know about the Great Commission. Jesus was sending disciples into the world at that time. He was sending them out like he was going to be leaving us. He said, go out and make disciples. But we preach to the entire world and make disciples and baptizing them. But in Matthew 10, verse 5 and 18, let's go there and let's read that. He says, these 12, in Matthew 10, this is 5 to 18. I'm not going to read all the 18 verses, but I'm going to read a few here. I'll do 8. These 12 sent out after instructing them, do not go in the way of the Gentiles and do not enter any city of the Samaritans but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How many say amen to that? Amen. Because it, it's about us. That the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and we see it all around us. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely you receive, freely give. In today's world, it is very hard to do this, to freely give. It's very difficult. I see it every day. I see it every day, and it's, it's a simple act of giving, giving in, being humble. And, and it's so interesting, you'll be walking through the halls of the school, and people will be doing this, and they bump into you. It, it's like a like one of those games. I don't know what game it was that you bump into things and you go like you bump into things. It's like playing bumper cars. People are so preoccupied within themselves. They're so self-centered. I don't know if they're playing games or writing things to their boyfriends or their girlfriends or whoever, but they're so caught up in these little things that they don't see where they're going. And even if they see where they're going, they don't get out of your way. I'm going this way, and you better move out of my way. I don't care how old you are. <laughs> and so this world today is full of toxicity. And it's so sad to see. And I sit there and I wonder, are there any Christians among these people that are walking and just don't care about coming and going? I always move out of the way. I always hold the door. I always hold the elevator. I always look around and see if there's somebody coming in in the elevator or not. This is who we are. We're servants. We're to be a blessing to someone. And somebody comes in the elevator and I'm holding the door for them. They smile and, and, and they thank me and they say, bless you. God bless you. And they smile. Thank you. We are to serve and bless someone every single day. Who are we? Who are we? The Lord Jesus Christ was already sending disciples into the world prior to giving this great commission. But he had warned them. Someone said that the greatest mission field we have today is in the church. How many believe that? Amen. Matthew 13, verse 25. says that while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went away. Weeds sown amongst the wheat. Apparently there's plenty of weeds in the church. We see it. We hear it. We have even theologians that are amongst us and preach it. We have people on TBN that come forth and preach it. If you really listen and you know the word and you know the doctrines, you will see that they are kind of Way off, not kind of, but they're way off. I remember I was sharing with um with my wife with Tony just yesterday of somebody that had a preaching. And I go, man, this person is totally off center. He's totally off the word of God. And he's be, being presented as one of the greatest preachers of time. <laughs> and we wonder why our churches are going in the way that they're going. 
We need to be a doctrine-filled, fundamental, Bible-preaching church. Amen. Amen. Preaching the full gospel, preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ the way that He gave it to us, not made up. Not something that we thought of. Not something that just came because of the fact that it sounded good. <laughs> Sometimes we don't like the truth. And the truth is what the Lord Jesus Christ was. Now, in Titus chapter 1, verse 16, it says that, and this is the NLT, the New Living Translation, such people claim they know God, but they deny Him by the way they live, and are detestable and disobedient workers for doing any good. I kind of like that translation because they're really harsh words. And they're understandable to some of us. Sometimes we don't understand <coughs> the New King James, so we come a little bit to a point of simplifying it and bringing it forth to a point of understanding it. And it's so important for us to understand that within the church we have these things that are occurring. It occurs all the time. It's occurring every day. And we have to be careful in who we're listening to and who we're reading and what we're reading and what we're taking in. Now, the other day, this is very important because I, um, I was really sick. I was horribly sick. I haven't been sick like that in a long time. I ended up getting um, the flu. And so I thought about this, in essence, with regards to what we take in and what we eat. And I said, wow, if this happens to me just because I ate something, how bad is it when I take in something that is not of nourishment spiritually? How sick do I get? But it's sick in my mind, in my heart, in my soul. And I was sick from about 7 o'clock till 3 in the morning, and I mean, it was horrible. And here's the word, Titus, verse 16. Now I'm going to read in the, in the New American Standard, known in, in the NIV. It says this, They claim to know God, but their actions, they deny Him. But by their actions, they deny Him, and they are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing any good. Toxicity within our church, within our churches. And it's unfortunate that people that claim to know God have are great at it. They're fantastic at it. They're wolves in sheep's clothing, like the Lord told us. And in here that we're reading in, in verse 26 of um, chapter 13 in Matthew, we talked about the weed. We talked about the weed amongst the wheat. I don't know if you if you're aware of this, but when they both start growing, the weeds and the wheat, they look alike. You can't detect it. You can't tell it apart. And they call it the farmers call it a bastard wheat. Because in its early stages, it cannot be distinguished from the real wheat. They cannot tell it apart. But when the crop began to grow here and produce grain, the weeds also grew. I'm sure that Jesus was looking at the Pharisees when he told this parable. He was facing them face to face, looking at them right in the eye. Do you think that they were still in their seats, sitting quietly? think it was worrying. And according to Matthew 13, 39, it says, And the enemy who sowed them is the devil, <clears throat> and the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. <laughs> Jesus says that the weeds are those who are not the followers of him, of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he lays it on the line he made it online by describing them as belonging to the devil. 
that's sad. My mom used to tell me all the time, it was funny, that we'd be going to church when we were kids. She used to ask us, who do you think the first one in church is? You see, pastor. And at that time it was Pastor Almoveda, Pastor knows who he is, and open the doors and everything. The pastors, she laughed. And the opposite was, the first one that is there is probably the demon with your buddies to see who they're going to borrow, see who they're going to change, see who they're going to try to attack. And it's so funny to think about it in that way. Now, these are the people that prophetically, there are people down through the ages that have not, who have not given their lives to Christ. They have not believed in Him. They have not believed in His work on the cross for them. The kingdom of heaven, they have not believed, they have not accepted Christ's rulership. Who is our master is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our master. He is our Lord. He is our King. He is not present in their lives. And so they therefore belong to the other kingdom. Are we toxic? Or are we transformed? That's the question. Do we just come here because it's something to do on Sunday mornings? So when we're awake, we, some, some get up at early at 7 o'clock, we'll have them in the middle and, oh, let's go to church, it's a good idea. It's, it's warm and fuzzy and there's good people, there's a lot of smiles and there's good handshakes and good hugs. But are we really here for, God, for Christ's rulership amongst us, over us? Is He our master? Do we really follow Him? Are we the weeds amongst the the we. Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. The word of God says here, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. When we say the image of God, who is the exact likeness of God. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Do we really believe? <clears throat> have we really accepted our Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior? Have we really come down to the nitty gritty and said, I give my whole life to you, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Have I really said my soul, my body, my spirit, everything I give to you? I was talking to someone the other day. It was very interesting. Don't get offended anybody, but the word of God is to offend anyway. It does not come from me. But I was talking to someone the other day. We are talking about tattoos. And... They were telling me that someone had told them, well, why can't I decorate God's temple? <laughs> wow. Never heard that angle. Well, God gave me this temple to do with what I could to take care of it. So why can't I decorate it? And I said, I'm sorry to tell you this, but that temple belongs to God. Amen. Because when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, we give it all to our Father. We give it up to our Father. Mind, body, soul, spirit, everything. We give it up to Him. And so this world is being calloused. It's being driven to a different way, different mindset, different thinking. And here it says, so that the world has been blinded had this, uh, this God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. And so there's callousness out there. What does that mean? 
that is the skin growth over and over and over to cover up a wound. It's scarred. That they might not see the light of the gospel and the glory of Jesus Christ because he does not mix with darkness. He is the exact likeness of God. Who are we? We were made in the image of our Lord. That once we came to our Father, we were created new. We are a new creature in Christ Jesus. I hope you understand that. But I hope more so that you believe it and accept it. That we are different. We just sang it that we were sanctified. We're set apart. We're set apart outside of this world. We're no longer part of this world. People should look at us as a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> Praise God when they look at me that way. The other day, this last week we've been out. I, I haven't been feeling well, but I've been going to work. And Thursday and Friday we had what they call the accreditation for asset, which is the accreditation for making it a, a college, accredited for five years to have college credit spread out. And everybody was running around like chickens without a head, going crazy trying to polish everything up. And, and I was helping out, but I was not losing any sleep over it. Because my father is the controller of everything. And we have like five Christians that are there. And they go down in their car, we go down and we pray in our car and our brakes when we get an opportunity. People think we're taking naps. <laughs> that we're going into the cocoons or in the catacombs and sitting down in the dungeon. That we're praying. And we go down and pray for ourselves and we pray for each other. And we pray that everything is done according to God's will. Remember that wherever you are, you are a blessing to those that are around you. God did just not create us just to create us. He created us to be a blessing every day to someone. And we should have joy on our face because that's what we are. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. Amen. And so we go down there and we're praying that everything goes right because this is our job. This is the job that God gave us. And we all have that understanding. So, they asked me if I was nervous. I said, just a little. I'm, I'm human. I'm a little nervous when they come into my class and they audit me. That I'm doing accordingly. That I'm going according to curriculum. I said, so what are you going to do? I'm going to do what I do every day. I, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not going outside. And I'm not going backwards. And I'm not doing anything outside but the fact of what they've asked me to do. I go, you really do that, Mr. Smith? Yeah, I do. Because I'm a child of God. Don't forget who we are. That's what we're going to do. I said, well, I hope that's all you've been doing all along. <laughs> so they came into my classroom, two of them, <clears throat> and the students, and I was not feeling good that day. And I mean, I was really, really just, I mean, sleepy, and my eyes kept closing, and I was sweaty. I think I had a fever. I don't know if I did. But the Lord gave me enough strength to teach that class according to the way that He wanted me to do. Not in my way. And I give all the honor and all the glory to God because without Him I could not do nothing. So the auditors came in and, and I was teaching the class and, and the students were responding and they were asking questions. There was a lot of relationship, interrelationship with the students and that's what they want to see, which happens not all the time, but for some reason, it was pronounced that day. The auditors sat there for 10 minutes and they left. And they were marking all kinds of things. They said, oh man, this stuff. <laughs> this is who we are. We always doubt God. Well, as I left and I was walking down the hallway after the class and one of the auditors seated me, tapped me on the shoulder. She said, fantastic lecture. I love your lecture. Great job. And I said, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for coming through through your instrument. And we have to give all the glory and all the honor to our Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord. Amen. Always. It's not us. It's not us that we do what we do at our job when it turns out perfect. You go, wow, what a beautiful job I did. <clears throat> yeah, you did because
because you were the instrument 